learners, I am Dr. Abha Sharma from School of Education. Welcome you all to NIOS Studios. So learners, today we are going to discuss on the topic, the changing school context and challenges for a teacher. The presentation is sequenced as, first of all, we are going to introduce about the topic, then the changes in school system. The changes in school system are Operation Blackboard, Shiksha Karmi Project, Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project, Bihar Education Project, Uttar Pradesh Basic Education Project, Mahila Samakhya, Lok Jumbish Project, District Primary Education Program, Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act and Challenges Before a Teacher. So students, you must have come across stories of the teacher-centered and highly disciplined classroom in earlier times. Teachers were feared and children did not dare to ask any questions. Memorization was stressed more than understanding. The classroom were teacher-centered. Nowadays, it's lesser teacher-centered with little more democratic inclination. Students were allowed to ask questions and participate in planning of co-curricular activities. Changes in school system. There have been significant developments in the school education since independence. You must have heard about national policy on education through which our country had initiated the march for achieving the goal of universalization of elementary education. The efforts for education for all were intensified in 1980s and 1990s through several programs such as Operation Blackboard. Operation Blackboard is a centrally sponsored program which was started in 1987 to supply the bare minimum crucial facilities to all primary schools in the country. The objective of the scheme is providing students studying in primary settings with the necessary institutional equipment and instructional material to facilitate their education. In the ninth five-year plan, the scheme was extended to all upper primary schools as well. Shiksha Karmi Project The Shiksha Karmi Project was implemented in 1987 with the assistance from Swedish International Development Corporation Agency. The project aims at universalization and qualitative improvement of primary education in the remote and socio-economically backward villages of Rajasthan with the primary focus on girls. Next is Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project. Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project. The Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project is supported by official development assistance from the Government of United Kingdom, both technically and financially. Phase 1 was carried out in 1984 to 1987. A bridging program was carried out in 1987 through 1989 and Phase 2 started in 1989. The objectives of Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project are improving human resources by enhancing the quality of the work of teachers and supervisors and providing new primary school classrooms of improved quality. Bihar Education Project Bihar Education Project was launched in 1991 with the aim of improving the elementary system of education in Bihar quantitatively and qualitatively. This project lays greater stress on providing education to the deprived sections of society such as scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and women. The project allows for local community participation in planning and implementation of crucial ingredients in the education system. The program lays greater stress on the following. Consolidation of the program in the seven districts of Bihar, 
and establishing strong linkages with the existing education system in Bihar. Focusing on the primary education that is for classes between 1st to 5th, developing links with other education schemes like district primary education program which is DPEP and other such programs, providing more emphasis to teacher training and conducting periodic baseline studies. Uttar Pradesh Basic Education Project The project includes three components building institutional capacity to plan, manage and evaluate a 10 to 15 year state-wise basic education development program by establishing a strengthened framework of state and district level planning, management and professional support organizations, improving quality and completion in an initial 10 of the 63 districts of the state through strengthened community participation, early childhood education, curriculum and textbook revision, in-service training, targeted programs for women and girls and strengthened school management and improving access to basic education in 10 districts by constructing additional primary and upper primary schools in unserved communities and supporting implementation of a redesigned program of non-formal primary classes for children unable to attend formal schools. Mahila Samakhya Education will be used as an agent of basic change in the status of women in order to neutralize the accumulated distortions of the past, there will be a well-conceived edge in favor of women. The national education system will play a positive interventionist role in the empowerment of women. It will foster the development of new values through redesigned curricula, textbooks, the training and orientation of teachers, decision makers and administrators and the active involvement of educational institutions. This will be an act of faith and social engineering. The National Policy on Education 1986 recognized that the empowerment of women is possibly the most critical precondition for the participation of girls and women in the educational process. The Mahila Samakhya program was launched in 1988 to pursue the objectives of the National Policy on Education 1986. The Parameters of Women Empowerment It's recognized that education can be an effective tool for women's empowerment, the parameters of which are enhancing self-esteem and self-confidence of women, building a positive image of women by recognizing the contribution to the society, polity and the economy, developing ability to think critically, fostering decision-making and action through collective processes, enabling women to make informed choices in areas like education, employment and health, especially reproductive health, ensuring equal participation in developmental processes, providing information, knowledge and skill for economic independence, enhancing access to legal literacy and information relating to their rights and entitlements in society with a view to enhance their participation on an equal footing in all areas. Lok Jumbish Project The Lok Jumbish Project was introduced in phases in Rajasthan. The first phase of the project was for a period of two years from 1992 to 1994 with the expenditure shared among Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, Government of India and 
government of Rajasthan in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. The second phase stretched up to 1998 with the sharing modality remaining the same. The coverage of the project is presently extended to 75 blocks covering a population of approximately 12 million. The principles of Lok Jumbish projects are the seven guiding principles are as follows. A process rather than a product approach, partnerships, decentralized functioning, participatory learning, integration with the mainstream education system, flexibility of management and creating multiple levels of leadership committed to quality and mission mode. The district primary education program which is known as DPEP. This is a centrally sponsored scheme of district primary education program. This was launched in 1994 as a major initiative to revitalize the primary education system and to achieve the objectives of universalization of primary education. DPEP adopts a holistic approach to universalize, access, retention and improve learning achievement and to reduce disparities among social groups. The objectives of DPEP are to provide all children access to primary education through either the formal or non-formal stream, to reduce differences in enrollment, dropout rates and learning achievement among gender and weaker section groups to less than 5%. Along with that, to reduce overall primary dropout rates for all children to less than 10% and to raise the average achievement rate by 25% by measured baseline level and ensuring minimum of 40% achievement in other competencies by all primary education children. The Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan that is SSA. In 2002, Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan was implemented as one of the India's flagship programs for universalizing elementary education in a time-bound manner as mandated by the 86th Amendment to the Constitution of India making free and compulsory education to children between the ages of 6 to 14 a fundamental right. SSA provides for a variety of interventions both for school and teachers for reaching its goals. Right to Education Act that is RTE, the Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act or Right to Education Act is an act of the Parliament of India enacted on 4th of August 2009 which describes the modalities of the importance of free and compulsory education for children between the age of 6 to 14 years in India under Article 21A of the Indian Constitution. These provisions have increased the enrollment to elementary level that is 5 to 14 years of age to 82 percent but unfortunately 50 percent of these children drop out of the school before they reach class 8th in spite of advocacy of child-centered pedagogy and education. Also, there is an increasing acknowledgement that the current system of schooling puts tremendous pressure and burden on our children. This is due to mismatch between the curriculum structure and environmental that is personal and social environment of children. Also, the teachers are not skilled to make this connection to make learning a joyful act and respond to their needs in imaginative ways. Though there has been great expansion of school systems 
अंडर सर्व शिक्षा अभियान इन नेबरहुड देयर इज मच टू बी डिजायर्ड ऑन द पैरामीटर ऑफ क्वालिटी द चैलेंजेस बिफोर अ टीचर द यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन कंटिन्यूज टू पोज चैलेंजेस फॉर अ स्कूल टीचर द इशूज ऑफ टोटल एनरोलमेंट एंड रिटेंशन आर स्टिल टू बी रीच्ड ऑल्सो द क्वालिटेटिव इशूज नीड्स टू बी एड्रेस्ड एट एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन लेवल द टीचर बिसाइड्स टीचिंग कॉम्पिटेंसीज मस्ट हैव इंटरेक्शन एंड रिलेशंस विद कम्युनिटी सो दैट ऑल चिल्ड्रन इन द नेबरहुड आर सेंट रेगुलरली टू द स्कूल द सर्व शिक्षा अभियान एंड सब्सिक्वेंटली द राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट हैज एम्फिसाइज दैट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ ओवरऑल रनिंग ऑफ द स्कूल बिकम द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ अ टीचर they should complete the entire curriculum within the given time and do continuous and comprehensive evaluation rather than one time examination to assess students they have to work in close relation with community members as a part of the school management committee they should hold parents meeting apprise them about their ward's progress and involve them in the growth and the development of children thus the role of a teacher is much comprehensive as compared to earlier times the act lays special emphasis on all round development of the child especially identifying and nurturing child's potentiality and talent teaching learning activities should be child centered with a focus on discovery and exploration of knowledge as tagore has said where the mind is without fear should be true for the schools efforts are required to make the child free of fear trauma and anxiety and helping the child to express views freely medium of instruction shall as far as practicable the child's mother tongue you will surely agree that these areas are particularly significant to the professional development of teacher at all stages both in their initial and in service training national curriculum framework that is ncf 2005 talks of constructivist approach to teaching and learning it requires a teacher to be a facilitator of children's learning in a manner that helps children to construct knowledge and meaning the teacher in this process is a co-constructor of knowledge teacher needs to be facilitator and creator of knowledge and thinking professionals they should be sensitive and capable of connect with what children learn from their home society and cultural environment and to further create opportunities for children to discover learn and develop such roles demand that teachers be equipped with an adequate understanding of curriculum subject content and pedagogy on the one hand and the community and school structures and management on the other hand education is not a mechanical activity of information transmission and teachers are not information dispensers teachers need to be looked at as crucial mediating agents through whom curriculum is transacted and knowledge is co-constructed along with learners learning is not confined to the four walls of the classroom for this to happen there is a need to connect knowledge to life outside the school and enrich the curriculum by making it less textbook centered so learners today we have discussed about changes in school system on the basis of operation blackboard shiksha karmi project andhra pradesh primary education project bihar education project up basic education project mahila samakhya लोक जुम्बिश प्रोजेक्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्राइमरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम 
सर्व शिक्षा अभियान राइट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन टू फ्री एंड कंपलसरी एजुकेशन एक्ट एंड द चैलेंजेस बिफोर अ टीचर थैंक यू